most crowded island in the world? Imagine a tiny spot in the ocean where more than a thousand people make their home. This place is roughly the size of a football field, yet it's packed with stories, struggles, and the spirit of community. What's it really like to live there? Are these islanders happy to live there? Or do they dream of a bigger world beyond their crowded shores? The story begins in Colombia. To reach the island, we boarded a small boat for an early morning ride that was a bit bumpy but full of excitement. Watch the full video to know how to reach the island. The trip took us two hours with a few stops along the way to drop off other tourists at nearby islands. Each stop was a little adventure and we couldn't help but chuckle at the unexpected detours. Finally, after what felt like a wild ride, we arrived at our destination, the island we had been waiting for, Santa Cruz del Islote. Welcome to Santa Cruz del Islote, the world's most crowded island. Stretching just one 200 meters long and 100 meters wide, this vibrant island is home to about 15,000 people. Here, life unfolds in a lively and colorful setting where everyone shares their tiny piece of paradise. Despite its small size, the island buzzes with energy as its residents create a close-knit community, making the most of their unique surroundings. As I set foot on the island, my first impression was surprisingly calm. It didn't feel as crowded as I expected. However, the buildings and pathways had a bit of a chaotic vibe. I won't sugarcoat it. Walking around here felt a bit overwhelming, and I'm from New York. I had no clue where the hospital was, and I found myself following a local for guidance. This can't be the right way, I thought, but I decided to trust him. Finally, we found our bearings and made our way to Bao Bao. Our first destination was our hostel, the only place to stay on the island, which boasted just five cozy rooms. It was an adventure just getting there. From the moment we arrived on the island, it felt like we were surrounded by people everywhere. No matter which way we turned, someone was there, making it impossible to find a moment of solitude on these bustling streets. Each house is packed with families, often sharing tiny rooms. How many people live in this room? I asked. About 10, came the reply. This is typical for the island, and it's startling to see how people manage with so little space. But overcrowding is just one part of the story. Welcome to the most densely populated island in the world. Just a two-hour boat ride from Colombia's mainland, the entire island is slightly bigger than a football field. With only four streets and buildings made entirely of concrete, there aren't any cars or motorcycles here. As soon as we stepped onto the island, we felt the energy of the crowd. The sounds of voices, roosters crowing, waves crashing, and music playing all blended together, creating a vibrant symphony that tells the story of life on this unique island. I spent $57 for a night at the hostel, and surprisingly, we were the only tourists around. The heat was intense, making everything feel even more alive. It was one of those sweltering days where you could almost feel the sun wrapping around you like a warm blanket. The island had its own unique charm, but I couldn't help but notice how the heat added to the experience. There are no cars or motorcycles on the island, which adds to the lively atmosphere you notice right away. The moment we arrived, we were surrounded by a chorus of sounds, voices, roosters crowing, waves lapping at the shore, and music playing in the background. Each home on the island has its own story to tell, reflecting the lives of the people who live there. Curious to learn more, we decided to step inside one and see what it was like. Inside, it's a bit dim because there's no electricity here. As we step in, we notice some laundry hanging in the hallway, drying in the open air. Let's take a look around this room the homeowner tells us that 10 people share just three beds. Remarkably, seven of those are kids living in this space. They use every inch available, even the walls, since they don't have a wardrobe. Clothes and shoes are scattered everywhere. 
the kitchen is a mess, largely due to the water shortage on the island. People only use water for drinking, so everything else is put on the back burner. On the streets, you can often see laundry flapping in the breeze or lying around. Barbers have makeshift chairs spilling out of their homes, and kids are running around everywhere. As we get to know the locals better, we realize that their future might be even more challenging than we could have imagined. The population density here is mind-boggling. Leftovers and dirty dishes are scattered about, and a dog is sniffing around for crumbs. Some folks are fishing, others are selling food on street corners, and a few are working on construction jobs. A handful of dreamers are even trying their luck with a lottery machine on the island, hoping for a big win. Amid all this, the cheerful sounds of a birthday celebration add a festive spirit to the lively atmosphere. We had the chance to meet one of the town's leaders, who is a descendant of the island's original founder. He kindly offered to take us on a tour to share the island's history with us. Our first stop was the very first house built on the island over a century ago, and it still stands strong today. Wow! I couldn't help but exclaim as we admired its resilience. As we strolled along one of the island's four streets, our guide led us to a popular spot among the locals. Oh wow, is this where the chicken fights happen? I asked, noticing the excitement in the air. Yep, these are the fighters right here, he replied with a grin. He explained that every other Friday, they host chicken fights, drawing crowds from neighboring islands as well. It's a lively event that really brings the community together. For just 10,000 Colombian pesos, which is about 250, you can visit the local aquarium. Our guide pointed out the swimming area and said, if you want to swim with the fish, you can jump in right here. I was shocked. Wait, people actually jump in? I asked. He nodded and I couldn't resist looking it up later. To my surprise, I found videos of people diving in and even reaching out to touch sharks. Interestingly, I had seen many videos online that spread false information about the island. When I arrived, I was surprised to discover that there are other islands nearby, which I had never known about. Many videos made it seem overcrowded, but in reality, it wasn't as packed as they claimed. To attract more visitors, the island has set up an aquarium designed specifically for tourists. Here, you can find all kinds of marine life, including fish, sea turtles, and even sharks, all kept in a relatively small area. One of the highlights is that tourists can swim with these amazing animals, which helps bring money into the local economy. While fishing is a crucial part of life here, many locals don't fully appreciate what the ocean offers them. Sadly, due to issues like marine pollution and overfishing, the islanders now have to import fish from elsewhere. It's a reminder of how important it is to take care of the environment for future generations. Now let's discuss how to reach Santa Cruz del Islote. The closest airport to Santa Cruz del Islote is in Tolu, TLU. But there are even better ways to reach the island. Mary Tours offers a ferry service that runs on demand from Cartagena to Santa Cruz del Islote. The tickets are priced between $68 and $69, and the ride takes about one hour and 20 minutes. It's a scenic journey that allows you to enjoy the beautiful views along the way. Life on this island feels very communal. To really grasp how small it is, I decided to walk from one end to the other, timing myself to see how long it would take. As I navigated through the narrow, maze-like streets, I realize that privacy is almost non-existent here. Each step brings me closer to someone else's life. Children make up a big part of the island's population, and even a small space of just four or five steps becomes a huge playground in their eyes. The island has just one school, one church, one clinic, one hotel, one restaurant, and three markets. 200 years ago, none of this existed. No streets, no chaos, no garbage, and no mosquitoes. According to local legend, 
some fishermen stumbled upon the island and decided to stay after a night of peaceful sleep without pesky boats. Over time, the island was expanded using coral rocks, seashells and waste. We are truly lucky to be situated on the world's second largest coral reef, surrounded by incredible marine life. The waves that crash in the open ocean can reach heights of 20 to 30 meters, but by the time they reach our shores, they're reduced to just 25 to 30 centimeters. If you look around, you'll see that five or six miles out from the coast, the waters are surrounded by pure coral. It makes us feel safe here. Girls here typically have their first babies at the age of 16, and the same pattern continues with their daughters. Without any family planning, the population is growing quickly. On average, families usually have between two to five children. Life for families on the island is quite relaxed. Many couples live together without formal marriages, and it's common for people to have children with different partners. This way of life is simply part of the island's culture and adds to the unique charm of the community. Let me introduce you to the nurse who has been a vital part of this island's community for over 40 years. She has helped bring almost every baby into the world safely. Most of the young people here were delivered by her and now she is even delivering their children. Remarkably, she has never lost a baby under her care. When little ones come to her with issues like vomiting, high fever, or diarrhea, she knows just what to do. She guides parents on the right treatments and medications, acting much like a doctor. Everyone here knows her and trusts her completely, making her a beloved figure in this tight-knit community. We're on our way to see some amazing plankton, we just left the hostel and are heading to spot some glow-in-the-dark fish right off the island. Oh wow, it's incredible! You can see the water glowing so brightly when you wave your arms or kick your feet. It feels like magic! Unfortunately, our camera couldn't capture the beauty of it. So what you see is just some footage from online. But trust me, with my own eyes, it looks like the water is sparkling. Almost like it's on fire. It's such a mesmerizing experience. Even with so many people around, there isn't a single police officer on the island. It's a close-knit community where everyone knows each other, so they feel secure without formal law enforcement. With a population of about 800, the island is surprisingly free of crime. No robberies, muggings, or fights. Instead, the community looks up to the older adults as their leaders. They are highly respected, and when arguments or misunderstandings arise, these elders step in to help. They listen to both sides, offer guidance, and help everyone reach an agreement. Afterward, everyone shakes hands and continues to live together as family, with no hard feelings. It's a beautiful example of how trust and respect can create a peaceful environment. Many of the people living on this isolated island have never ventured beyond its borders. They have no interest in leaving their small community or trying to change their way of life. Each day, the residents grow even closer to their homeland, cherishing their shared joys and positive values. However, life in Santa Cruz de Tote does come with challenges. The community struggles with issues like a lack of clean water and inadequate waste management. The island simply can't support more people due to these problems. Despite these difficulties, the islanders maintain strong connections with one another, resembling a large family, and they find happiness in their close-knit relationships. Their bond to each other and their home keeps their spirits high reminding us that happiness can be found even in challenging circumstances. As I headed back to the island, I felt like my adventure was coming to an end. Once I arrived at the hostel, I packed my bags and started walking toward the port. I couldn't help but feel grateful for all the amazing people I met, for the warmth, kindness and unique spirit of Santa Cruz. The experiences I had on the island were unforgettable. Before I left for good, I wanted to ask a few locals one last question. Do they feel like this place is crowded? 
They answered, yes, it's populated. Even though this place is known as one of the most crowded islands in the world, the people here are some of the happiest and friendliest you'll ever encounter. They've learned how to make the best of their situation. It's a powerful reminder that true happiness doesn't come from having more, but from appreciating and making the most of what you already have. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Travel Forever On.